with you today for another Disney planning checklist sort of talked about. Anyway, so planning your Disney trip, what you need to know three to six months approximately out from the dates that you want to go on your trip. So three to six months. So this is like 90 to 180 days, kind of, sort of. So first, number one, if you have not booked your resort yet, you need to get on that. Um, I've been quoting some clients for the last couple weeks, um, like a month, two months out, and there may be three to five resorts with availability. That's it. Like stuff is booking up crazy fast. And so if you, um, are looking at going in the spring, summer, um, even the fall, I mean, if, if there's somewhere specific you want to stay, you want to grab your rooms right now, because I know March there was like limited availability in value resorts. Um, which I just quoted one that was four resorts open, two values, one moderate, one deluxe. That was it. And I looked at it the next day and it was two moderates and two values. There was no deluxe left. So it's, it's really varied in what's available right now and it can vary from day to day. So if you see something you want and you're doing a package, go ahead and book it. The $200 will book your resort and your tickets. You can go ahead and make those park reservations and you have to have it paid for 30 days ahead, but you can still modify that reservation if you find another resort that opens up that matches your dates. Um, so just be aware. Um, and I would modify if you've already made your park reservations and then that way you don't have to go back in and like those will cancel out and you have to book new ones. Just, yeah. Anyway, we can talk about that. Um, so book your hotel and start looking, um, at your transportation, how you're getting there. If you're driving, fine. Um, be aware there are parking fees, uh, value resorts right now. We are early 2022 value resorts are $15 moderates are $20 and deluxe is $25 per night of your stay. So make sure you calculate that in that will be charged to your room. Um, so if you're driving, you know, you'll have the car. If you are not driving, if you're flying, um, whether you're flying into MCO, which is the Orlando airport or into Sanford. Um, I know the the airports that are closest to my house fly into Sanford. And so I, you know, flying into MCO and Magical Express really never, I'd have to drive like three hours to the nearest airport where I've got one that's 45 minutes away. So anyway, I digress. Um, wherever you're flying to, you need to start looking at your flights for how much, you know, your flights are going to cost. Plus you need to start looking at regardless of which one you're flying into now, you have to have transportation to your resort. So you might rent a car, which again, you're going to look at those, uh, daily parking fees, or if you're going to have a shuttle service or some kind of transportation service, you can use Uber and Lyft, um, which you can't pre-plan. Um, so just have an idea of how you're going to get from the airport to your resort when you get there. All right. So that's stuff you really need to be thinking about first. Um, second, if you have not created your My Disney Experience account, you need to do that. Get the app on your phone. That way you can look at everything, see everything, see what's going on. Um, I like right now to go to the tip board and look and see kind of what the, um, wait times are based on the crowd calendar that I'm looking at. Um, so I can see, okay, well, they're saying it's, it's a crowd level of a seven and this is what the times are looking like. But when I'm going, it's only going to be a three. So the wait time shouldn't be so bad. Um, so, but see, I'm weird like that. I like to look at stuff. Um, so anyway, also in your, my Disney experience account, if you are going with other people, go ahead and get those people linked up in your account. If you've like, my niece is going with me and I already had her in my account. Um, because she went with me last year, but she never actually downloaded the app and created an account for herself. So I got her to do that this year because I wanted her to be able to see all that we were going to do. And so once she did that, then I was able to link to her account. So that way she can see everything I'm doing. And then while we're in the parks, if I want her to say, make us a lunch reservation, then she should be able to do that because she's linked not really sure because they like my kids are on mine and she's not linked to them because they don't have an account. So not really sure how that works. But anyway, I'm the planner. So 
but I wanted her to be able to see all the things. I've got notes. That's what I'm like waving over here. Um, all right. Next, obviously, you've got to have park tickets if you're going to the parks. Uh, maybe you're doing resort only and you're not doing parks. And so if that's you, skip this. Um, so have your park reservations. I go ahead and look at the crowd calendar and decide which parks I want to start in. We get park hoppers, so I don't always plan my evening park. Um, sometimes we'll just look at the wait times and decide where to go. Sometimes we'll just go out to the bus stop and say, okay, the next bus, that's where we're going. And that was really fun last time. Um, so it's, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. And that's a way to, you know, plan, but not plan. So we always plan our morning park. Um, and this may change after I make dining reservations based on the places I want to stay, but that's not till 60 days. So that's in the next video. Um, so crowd calendars are your friend or your enemy, depending on when you're going. Um, I use touring plans primarily, um, and I use their touring lines app. Um, and so their lines app will uh, tell you what they ranked the park that day and it'll tell you the posted times on Disney like my Disney experience and it'll tell you the actual time so uh, people that use the lines app when you're in the parks you can actually like time your wait so when you get in line versus when you're getting on the ride itself and you can time it so then they have that like minute you know that actual wait time versus what the posted time is so that's really helpful too especially when i'm in the parks and i can say well it, it's posted at 35 but people are saying they're going through it in like you know 12 minutes so i did this on buzz lightyear a couple years ago um it was uh posted i think 35 40 minutes i went through the line in eight minutes so yes you know and that was that was during fast pass before you know people say disney inflates it due to you know the new genie plus well they you know it was like that a long time ago they they do the best they can based on what it is and had it said eight minutes and i'd waited 35 i might have been mad but because it said 35 and i only waited eight it was great it was a great surprise that it didn't take me as long to get on the ride so that's the idea of having a higher posted than actual wait time um, so make your park reservations based on, you know, which parks you want to go to. I like to pick the ones that have the lowest projected crowd levels, um, as my main parks for each day. Um, but again, it depends on what your family want to do. And, you know, if you can get certain dining reservations on certain days, then that's going to kind of affect which parks you're going to go to. Right now, I am digging deep into dining research. I am looking at which res which dining options we want to go with this time. I've, I really don't want to plan too many sit-down meals because I feel like that takes out a lot of time and that really uh, constricts you on um, kind of the spontaneity of doing something that you're not really planning on doing, but maybe something comes up. Um, so we have some staples we always like to go to and then I always try to throw in at least one or two new places that we have not gotten to eat at yet. So, and I will share my plans, um, in some coming videos. Um, but any sit down meals that you want, I try to have those set in stone and kind of prioritize which ones do I need to try to get made first because some places really book up fast. Um, Beaches and Cream is one we always like to go to, and it's hard to find a dining reservation for it if you don't make it 60 days out. So, uh, kind of have a plan for, and since we park hop, um, I have a plan for, okay, we'll plan it for these days for lunch, and if I can't get it for lunch, then I'll plan it for dinner, and we can hop to that area, um, later in the day. So, that's kind of my game plan, so to speak. Um, so, dining uh, I always go to allears.net. They have kind of the most up-to-date menus with pricing because the Disney menus don't always share pricing um, because like certain all-you-can-eat places fluctuate depending on um, season and stuff. So um, allears usually has the, the current pricing and everything and what is available at that time. Plus, they have a lot of great reviews. So if you're really not sure, if you've not been in a while... Um, or if you're looking for a new place to go, their reviews are really awesome. Um, 
also um, look at your stroller ECV options if you are in need of a stroller while you're there. Um, when my two older ones were small, um, I didn't have a double stroller because my oldest didn't need a stroller at home, so to speak. So, um, I would rent a double stroller while I was there because it was too much walking for her when she was, you know, four or five. But, you know, at four or five, I wasn't going to push her around in a stroller at home. Um, so look at stroller rentals. Um, you can do these in the parks, but if you rent one in the park, they're the hard ones. They don't lean back. They're not they're not really comfortable. They do have the new ones now, but they're really the same as the old ones. They're just pretty. Um, but for those, um, you can't take them out of the park. So if they go to sleep in the stroller, then you still have to leave it in the park and carry them to the car or transportation or whatever. So just keep that in mind. Um, because if you're driving and you're walking all the way to your car, it's a long trek. You know, if you're taking them out of Magic Kingdom all the way to your vehicle, with the monorail and all the things so keep that in mind um so there's lots of places around orlando that will rent um ecvs and strollers that you can take back to your room keep for the length of your trip and they'll pick them back up um uh the other well i had on here plans for transportation but i already covered that so that's kind of the big ones for right now. Um, if you're three to six months out, you can't start making dining reservations yet. Um, so right now I'm just more in a, a holding pattern. You know, I'm kind of looking at, I've still got mm, about 10, 12, or about 12 more days before I can make my dining reservations. So I'm kind of at that point now where I'm getting into the nitty gritty of once I get those dining reservations made, then I can move on and do some other stuff. But that's in the next video. Uh, so make sure you subscribe because the next one that I'll be doing will be 30 to 60 days, 90 days. This one's 90 days. So 30 to 90 days, kind of that 60 day period right there um, of what to do um, leading up to your trip. So I will talk about that in the next video and give this a big thumbs up and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks, bye.